Hi, my name is Veronica Rose. Welcome to today's session. It is on IT audits and assurance. And we have a special guest today. She's from the Pearl of Africa. Uh, in, in the, at this moment, she will introduce herself. Samari, go ahead. Thank you so much, Rose. I'm so excited to join you here today on your channel. And uh, it's very exciting to share something with the rest of the world. I'm called Samari Kachibale. I am from Uganda, Africa, that is East Africa. I have been in IT audit for quite some years, that is about um, eight years. Um, and I've majorly uh, executed my audits in the financial and banking sector. So it's been a good, it's been a good journey. It's been a good journey, I've learned quite much. Thank you, Rose. Oh, thank you for the brief yes. introduction. We know you okay. take long to share your profile, but uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, <laughs> Samari, we know you're an, you're an expert in IT audit. Yes. And I, I believe our viewers would love to hear from you uh, the key okay. skills that you would recommend for an IT auditor. Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Rose. So for the years that I have spent in IT audit, um, well, I didn't start out as an expert, definitely. I remember when I joined the profession, I had a background of systems development and systems analysis. And uh, during that time, I got to learn of a firm that was uh, looking for an IT person. And this firm was uh, specializing in IT audit. And that's where I picked my interest from. And I remember when I was going for that interview, I wasn't particularly afraid or um, nervous that I couldn't fit in, but I knew that I could make it. I was confident. And why I brought up that story is to say that you need your confidence above everything else. You need your confidence. You need to be confident and believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing and know that you're doing the right thing. So, well, in IT audit, you need the technical competence. You need the ex technical skills to execute your roles. So you are not going to make it if you have come in and you studied your economics, you studied your accounting, and you're coming to do IT audit. It's not going to work. You need the IT skills. You need to know IT. You need to know systems. You need to know the language. You need to know the commands. You need to know the different databases and how they relate. You need to know the infrastructure, the operating systems, the different kinds of servers and how they run, antiviruses, malware, firewalls, routers. You need to get your hands dirty. You need to have a grip of these technicalities. So that is one rose. You need to be technical savvy. You need to be tech savvy. That is one. So once you have the tech savvy skills, you must remember that as audits, we are trying to communicate to the stakeholders. We are trying to communicate to the board, to executive management, and to other business owners. So we must be able to relay to them what we are doing in a way that they understand. For the board member, they are trying to protect the interest of the shareholder. So at the end of the day, as an auditor, you need to communicate in a way that when you're communicating to the board of directors in a way that they understand and they, they value the information that you've given them and it is in the interest of the shareholder, you know? Because what the shareholder wants to know is, have I made profits? Have I made money? Are we working? So as an auditor, when I'm communicating, it's important that I communicate in the same language. So what I'm trying to say here is that you need strong communication skills, both oral and written, so that as you're relaying your information, your report, the different stakeholders involved in your work, you come to their level and you explain to them. Um, I, when I was doing most of the interviews, when I would go and I'm um, being recruited for jobs, um, they would ask me, the, the main concern was that IT guys are so tech, you know, they are so techy and the things they say nobody understands them, you know. So IT, IT, the, the, the CEO calls IT to explain and IT is speaking a language that the CEO does not understand. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, and they're not willing to break down and explain it because maybe they'll feel like, you know, they it will, you know, it come into their... So the main issue that recruiters would ask me is, you know, these IT guys, they stress us, they stress us. They, we ask them information, they say they don't have it. They tell us things we don't understand. So that is, they're trying to communicate to you that they need you to be a strong communicator to the IT. And at the same time, as much as you're going to speak the IT language with the IT people, you need to come back to the non-IT teams and communicate their language as well. So I must go to the IT people, speak their language, because if I don't speak their language, they will undermine me. They will underlook me. They will know that I don't know what I'm doing and they'll play around with you. <laughs> and you don't want to do that as a night order. You don't find yourself in such kind of scenario, yeah? Mm -hmm. So communicate, you know? Communicate, know the person you're communicating to, what they understand, communicate what they understand. You also need good and strong written communication skills. You're going to write reports, you're going to write presentations, you're going to write um, planning memos, you're going to send emails, you need to have good written etiquette and skill. So it is a skill that you need to work on. Another important um, skill that I have found very um, helpful in my journey is you need to be a team player, Rose. Mm -hmm. Because you are dealing with people. Unlike the IT guys, the primarily IT teams who are always, you know, in their computer trying to do things, you know, extracting this data, putting it here. All I want to do is that router to be up, that firewall to be up, that server to be running, and I don't need to talk to you, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, when we cross over to IT audit, the things change, you know? Because I need to be able to build a rapport with the people that I'm working with, with the people that I am auditing and the people that I'm going to be reporting to about the audit. So all of them must see me that I'm on their side. So when I got the people I'm auditing, I must not look to them like I'm investigating them, like I have come to find error and you know report them and you know bring an end to their job and their career. No, 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 no. So when I'm dealing with the auditee, I must be able to be on his team. Mm -hmm. And again, when I come to report to whoever is supposed to receive this information and use it to make management decisions, I also must be on their team. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to be a team player because you'll find yourself in situations where you're going into a new area. You've, you may also not know about it yourself. And the same people you're auditing, you're going to rely on them. Mm -hmm to be able to um, execute your job. So team player skills are very, very important. Um, another um, non-soft skill that you may need, you need to be very analytical in your mind and in the way you do work. Yeah. You, need how to, you need to learn how to use analytical tools to do your work because you're going to be presented with information that is voluminous, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you'll be given an assignment to carry out a revenue assurance audit. So here you're going into um, transactions and there are many, there are a lot. Yeah. You can't do it in Excel. Yes. So you're going to need to have your skills on, on some analytics to help you. And also they help you represent your work in such a graphical way that is easy for the accountants to understand who are usually most CEOs and managing directors are accountants. So <laughs> it's for your own good when you, you know, play around with numbers and you have all those graphs going up and they'll be excited. Those things excite them. I noticed that they do. Yeah. yeah. So you'll need to have some good data mining and analytics skills. Another thing you need to know is you need to be flexible in what you're doing. Yeah. Because um, most of the times, IT auditors, we go in with the mentality that we're going to audit IT, which is what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Well, that doesn't always turn out to be the case, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, it, is, uh, it has been a, a, a tug of war that we've been having with the different uh, management levels at different, in the different employ, employers that I've interacted with. 
Yeah. Even those that are not my employers, they struggle with IT auditors. We don't want to be involved with non-IT audit work. Absolutely. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, well, the head of internal audit has a plan to achieve. Mm -hmm. And when he feels for some reason, they feel that they feel that our scope is narrow and most of them feel that we can do our work in in two months and the rest of the year what are you doing <laughs> yeah that's the biggest question i used to face like okay so you can audit the database you can audit the core banking the network can't you combine all that into maybe general controls mm -hmm. and then yeah in three months we'll have done with it audits then you can join the other teams go to the branches, audit the branches, start auditing, um, I don't know, marketing and sales. Go at, so you have to be flexible. Otherwise, you'll be out of employment because you cannot say no, you know. Yeah, so you definitely discuss with them, and uh, but you must be flexible. You must be flexible, yeah. And you must be adaptable, have the adaptability, you know, to learn and uh find yourself uh, leaning into the different environments that you'll be placed in. Um, you need to be able to um, be open to learning. Yeah. Learning will never come to an end. Uh, technologies change every day because imagine I started auditing when Windows Server 2003 was the, was a thing. <laughs> Right now we are on we are on what twenty something we have moved yes. you know we have moved so I, I must be able to learn all these technologies as they come on. By the time I started, we were not yet virtualization was not yet so the hype so hype. But right now, that's what everybody is doing. When I started, we were not in cloud. The cloud was so small; it was limited to Google you know, and Google was also still limited to a few things. It wasn't as big as it is right now. And right now, everybody's moving to cloud. Companies are moving all their, all their infrastructure to cloud. Yes. So it is, you need to be changing with the changing times. You need to learn, expose yourself to blogs, expose yourself to information, get to know what is happening around you, get to know the new things that are happening. The attack dynamics are changing every day. So get involved. Then um, lastly, be involved in your profession. It's very, very important, you know, that you serve your profession. Uh, serve your profession, get in touch with your body. If it's ISACAR, if it's um, IIA, if it's, um, I don't know, but be involved, do something for your profession. Be volunteer something. It speaks volumes to your employer mm -hmm. and to your potential you know, clients if you're in consultancy because it shows that you have a heart for the profession and your service is out of integrity and love of what you do, not only to make money out of it. So serve your profession. It will take you places. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, those uh, are the overall, in a nutshell, really, but we could get down to the nitty gritties of it. But in a nutshell, Rose, that is what I would say are the critical and uh, core skills an IT auditor should have. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you so Thank much, you. Summary, for sharing. Actually, yes. you've detailed everything. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Isaka. Because uh, I, IT auditors, for sure, you really need to join a professional body. And myself, I can only recommend ISACA for you. Yes. <laughs> ISACA, yes, yes, yes. So personally, I do serve on ISACA board as an IT governance director. Mm -hmm. And also I serve in She Leads Tech. She Leads Tech is a movement. Uh, it's a branch of ISACA. It's a movement where we encourage and motivate and mentor ladies to take up uh, leadership roles and uh, grow their careers in InfoSec. So I am heavily involved in service. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Mary, for your time. <laughs> yes. It was a, really a great discussion. Um, thank you to okay. our viewers also. Uh, keep watching. Mm -hmm. Uh, also hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the upcoming uh, sessions.
Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.